Hello everyone, thank you for tuning in. As always, I appreciate that. Today I will review a game called Daymare 1998. This is a third-person horror game heavily inspired by Resident Evil. It really feels like a homage to that game. In this game, you start as a member of a spec ops team that is sent in to clean up after the zombie apocalypse. Basically, you know the drill. This story is told so many times, and there's really nothing here that's new or different. Uh, on the contrary, the writing in this game is awful. It's very generic. Uh, but the story unfolds through multiple characters, offering different perspectives on the events, which is nice, so that sort of mixes things up a bit. But the cutscenes that sort of tell the story are overlong, they're crude to look at, especially the characters' faces. It's really awful. Also, the voices are very cringy and... It seems like multiple voice actors were used to voice the same character. It really sounds crazy. The, the game has a lot of campiness around it. You know, it's so bad it, it gets good, uh, so to speak. And I do enjoy campiness, of course. But um, again, it's it's really awful. in the building. You're not gonna let us die here. No, you're right. I guess I can. I mean, especially you. Oh, what the heck. I'll lend a hand. But the in-game graphics, especially the interiors, they look very well designed. The levels themselves, you know, good designed, uh, lots of decoration, and the light and shadows that were used here are very well done. But the immersion, because there's a lot of immersion in this game, is sometimes broken with clipping issues and doors that you can only open and not close and the doors will automatically close like magic it just it's just silly so in this game you walk a lot in a linear fashion through dimly lit hallways now there are a lot of people complaining about the pace of the game that's so slow i personally enjoy it i i personally enjoy uh slower moving games where you have to be careful you're soaking up the atmosphere looking for uh, items that you will uh, need and uh it's it's um it's fun, in my opinion, but I can see why people don't like that when you just walk the hallway, you open the door, you walk the hallway, open the door, because that's pretty much what you're doing all the time. I also love the in-game inventory system, where, different than in other games, you on the fly look at your wrist pad, where you can use and select and combine or drop items that you found in the environment. So it's real-time, and... In many other games, if you go into the inventory, the game stops, basically, and you get a menu. Not in this game, it's on the fly. This is how it should be done in all games. It makes sense, you know? And you have to look for a safe spot to, to mess with your inventory, otherwise zombies will jump you. Now, on the advised difficulty, there's a nice survival element to this game which means that ammo and health items are scarce. So that really makes sure that you, you look around the environment very, very good, uh, finding, uh, looking for these, uh, these items that you're going to need. Otherwise, you won't survive. There's a good variety of zombies, but they are overused over and over again. They haunt the halls, and they're nicely placed in the levels, hiding in dark places, ready for uh, them to jump you uh, behind doors and around corners. It's very well done. Running away makes sense a lot of times, but if you get cornered, then you can engage in combat with a variety of uh, hand weapons. The shooting is fun. Shooting off a limp or see a head explode in front of you never gets old. You can easily cheese these zombies by just shoving them a few times and then shooting them in the back of the head. So that's, yeah, you can do that. Sometimes you stumble upon a puzzle that needs solving or some kind of minigame hacking thingy. And most of these things make sense given the certain circumstances you're in. Other times, especially the puzzles, feel random, uh, overly difficult and make no sense. Although the game shows promise, you know, I think it's very impressive that a small team of developers can sort of recreate a quite a substantial game actually. 
much like Resident Evil, uh, that just blows me away. On the other hand, I cannot advise you to buy this game in its current state. I mean, there's still a lot of technical problems with it. Uh, like the earlier uh, mentioned uh, clipping issues, but there are also like stuttering uh, going on in places. I actually had a game-breaking bug where the game would, would crash uh, when I was doing a specific puzzle and I could not progress until I reversed the uh, patch that was uh, launched a few days ago. So overall, I mean, there, there's good stuff here. There are tense moments. There's, there's good design levels here. Uh, and, uh, but it's in its current state, it's, it needs more work, more time in the oven. So as I'm making this video now on the 27th of September 2019, it is not recommended to buy this, at least not in full pri at full price. So get it in a few months' time uh, when it's on sale. I think that's, that, that's a good buy uh, then. So thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Suck a shit!